Well, hello, hello. It were just a few minutes before four o'clock. Yep, just a couple. So let me catch you up on a few things while we wait for our friends. It takes just a minute for those notifications to happen and all of that good stuff. <laughs> so I'm Leslie with Love Ink and Paper. I'm glad to spend some time with you this afternoon. So this is my current host code. I changed it out. Um, I got some orders from my last class. So I went ahead and um, finalized that order and got a new one started. So we're all good there. This should keep, take us most of the way through July. So from now until, you know, monthly card class time around the 12th um, of July, or maybe longer, just depends. Um, but anyway, if you happen to order now, this would be the one you would want to use. And let's see, how are we doing? We've got another minute or so, so let me tell you a little bit about the news that I have kind of underneath here, okay? So if you've missed this or you're joining me and you don't see the host code, go back to the beginning of the video later, okay? All right, so we have a few more days um, till Friday, so five days, sort of, um, to take advantage of the, the starter kit, okay? So I like to say that the starter kit comes with lots of opportunity and zero obligation. Okay, so what does that mean? That means you can join the Stampin' Up! family. You can choose to shop for yourself at a discount. Totally fine. You can choose to join Stampin' Up! and share the, your catalogs or whatever. Share your creativity with some family and friends. Doesn't have to be big. You don't have to do videos. <laughs> okay. Um, share it with those that you're close to, and, um, and that's fine, okay? So for right now, through Friday, you can get $155 worth of product, whatever you like. There's no set kit. You don't have to get certain things, okay? Whatever you want that totals $155, you will pay $99.00. And if and any tax in your locale, I happen to live in a state where there does not happen to be any sales tax. But if you live in a state where there's sales tax, you would pay the sales tax on the $99. And then there is no shipping to get it to you. Now, this starter kit does come with a packet of um, business supplies, catalogs, um, order forms that kind of stuff. You get one paper pumpkin kit. I don't know which one they're sending these days, but anyway. So if you have any questions, please get in touch with me before Friday and we can talk about it and what it means for you. Okay. Also until Friday is the designer series paper sale. It includes almost all the designer series papers, um, not the specialty papers and not our um, sort of color family packets. So the regals and the subtles, those aren't, those aren't on sale, but all the rest of the papers are, which is really great. Okay. My favorite could be this. This is the bargain of the century um, to get, I know you say $25. That's a, not a bargain. It actually is when you consider that there's 48 12 by 12 sheets. It is a lot of paper and it is a lot of fun. And I just shared a couple of ways in my fun fold class that you can use um, some of this pretty paper to make cards and it's awesome. All right, so let's move on from there. Let's start talking about some paper pumpkin stuff since we are after four o'clock. All right, so fun in the sun. This is the next, the July kit, okay. Um, there are going to be fun accordion fold kinds of bases, so that will be really cool. You know, there's three each of three designs, so and all of that will come in the kit. 
Okay, the Stampin' Spot will be Daffodil Delight. We'll have some sequin embellishments, um, adhesive dots and tear and tape, and yeah, should be really, really fun. So you have until the 10th of July to sign up for that kit. So that's, it's a Monday, all right? So I know the holiday um, time might be kind of crazy for you or whatever, so just do it today, and then you don't have to worry about it, okay? Um, all right, so let's keep going. All right, so the other day I unboxed the, the kit, okay, the welcome in kit. I took everything out. I showed you the Knight of Navy ink spot. Um, if you are new to, to um, Paper Pumpkin, in your very first kit, you will get a what they call a size D block, okay? Um, I generally swap those out for the more ergonomic, um, really nice um, blocks that Stampin' Up! sells in the online store and for my full-size pad. They just make this a little easier for me, okay? Um, okay, so this particular kit makes, well, if you do it the way I showed the other day, makes these um, three cards, okay? And I think, I didn't, I didn't go outside the box too, too much. Um, I, I left these pretty close to the way they were designed. I did mac, um, mask this to get just the thank you part. Nope, that's a different thank you. Never mind. Um, there is a way, and I, I've done it on a different card, that if you cover up with like scotch tape or something, cover up those for your hospitality, you can get just thank you. Okay. All right, so that's what um, the kit is designed to create, which are great cards, okay? Not, not knocking any of that. But this kit does coordinate with some annual catalog product. So let me just show you that. So this Countryside in Suite, okay. If you were to order the whole suite, you would get the designer series paper, you would get the embossing folder, the stamp set. Now this is all one big giant stamp, okay. One cling stamp. Now I have seen people cut, cut it apart, okay but it's one big stamp and then you use the dies to cut the size ring that you want. Okay, so if you want this dotted ring, you would, let's see if I can do that. So this cuts the outside, right? So if you want this as a border, you would then use this die and then you would have a skinny border with the dots, okay? so. That's how those work. All right. Um, so yeah, that that coordinates really, really nicely with the kit this month. All right, and I have used some of those products. I have also brought um, over here a, my Boho Blue Pad and my Calypso Coral Pad. I'm not sure how much I'll use this, but there are a, that one of the bases is Calypso Coral, so we'll see. All right, we'll set those over there. This was one I did. I used Happy Birthday um, with those dies. I cut out some. This was a card front and a card base, and I just kept cutting sections out and using them and fitting them back in like a puzzle. And then I stamped the vase in the boho blue. So anyway. All right, so let's take a look. Um, so yeah, there was an add-on this month. And I've put, I just put a little piece of magnet strip over the really strong tape that they use, because I, I don't 
especially when there's little teeny dies like this, I don't necessarily want to be trying to pull them up off of that tape. So there is a, a die that cuts out a base, some little greenery, and a flower. So there's the vase. Here's a vase done out of designer series paper. So I cut that with the die. I cut some blanks and then stamped them. This one is in boho blue. So we have that, okay? We also got, and these were really great, these little, whoops, we got some pretty Knight of Navy embellishments, okay? But we got these little foam strips. Some of them were long, like this one, and some were very short, which were perfect for um, popping things up, so I liked that. We also got some um, tear and tape adhesive, okay? All right, I think that's pretty much everything we need out of there. So let's do a little bit of something different. So here is one of the card bases. Now the cool thing with the paper pumpkin card bases is when they're all one color like this on the front and white on the back, that means the core of the paper, the inside, is white. Okay, our regular um, Stampin' Up! cardstock is not. It is dyed all the way through. So when you tear your paper, you do not see the white core. Okay? All right, so I have already sliced off um, two quarter inch strips. All right, so this is a little short anyway. So this is um, eight inches instead of um, eight and a half. And I'm gonna do a little bit of tearing. Now you have the greatest paper shapers ever right there at the end of your hand, all right? But there is a correct way to tear your paper. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, a lot of people, want, when they go to tear, they just yank and they pull really fast. And what happens when you do that is you get this, okay? I did not pay attention, I was, I, it didn't matter to me, this, I was just masking something. So I just pulled and this is what happens. It goes wherever the grain of the paper is, okay? So if you want a straight tear, you need to keep your paper shapers close together you need to pull towards you, and you need to go slowly, All right? So I'm just gonna start, and I'm just gonna pull, and I'm just stabilizing over here with this hand, and I'm just pulling a little bit with this hand. And now I'm gonna switch, okay? And see how it's exposing all that nice, white edge, which is really cool, okay? So let's crease that with our bone folder. Okay, so because the inside of this card is white, it doesn't show up super well. So we're gonna do something a little different. So I've taken one of the envelopes, and I've cut it apart, and I've taken the biggest section Hang on. Ah, here we go. So I've opened it up. So this is how your envelopes come. So if you just take the skinniest little bit off the edges, it will open up, okay? This is your biggest piece right here between the flap and this score line. So if you cut just on either side, the inside of your score line, you're gonna get a piece that's roughly four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, um, and then I could then I trimmed it down. So I then trimmed it to five and a quarter by four. Some people like those eighth inch inch measurements. I am not one that does. Okay, so I'm going to just put that in there. I'm not going to stick it down yet because I want to do a little bit of stamping right here. 
And I think what I'm going to do is use this happy birthday. Honestly, I'm not sure which stamp set it comes from. Sorry. I'm adding a few because I, w I liked some of the greetings in... Actually, you know what? Hold on. Let me show you how I did that um, masking thing. We'll make this a thank you card. Okay. And just keep it. I use the squares on my grid paper a lot. Okay, so all we want is the thank you. So we need to cover up where it says your hospitality. Okay, and then we need to cover up the word for over here. Okay, so now if we're very careful and don't knock those off, all that will get ink is thank you and the, the post-it notes. So here's your tip. Always remember to remove your mask before stamping because if you don't, you get a big blob, okay? Go ahead, ask me how I know. All right. <laughs> yep, done it a bunch of times, actually. You'd think that after the first time I'd learn, but no. <laughs> All right, so there's our nice little thank you right there in the corner. All right, so then we're going to take this, and I want, I don't want to get this all dirty. So let me see what I've got for scrap paper. Sometimes I have a piece around that I can just easily use. I guess what I'm going to do is pull a piece. I have a bunch of layers on here, so let me just pull one of these out and fold it like this and then we can do some stamping. So we've got this nice big um, floral stamp that's meant to stamp on our vases. Okay, but you can Kind of, if I, especially if I line the score line up, then I can kind of do a little tone on tone. And see how this has like an opening? This part fits in there, which is pretty cool because now you can kind of work your way across the paper with a border. Now that wasn't very straight and that is because I am sitting and I am not standing up or it's also a little hard to hold this because I've got it diagonally. It didn't quite feel like it wanted to fit. Okay, let's see if I can do a better job on this one. Uh, I overlapped a little bit. That's okay. Nobody's going to notice. Nobody's going to notice. And if they do, this is my saying. This is what I say to people that come to class. If anybody ever complains about a little not perfect lining up or something like that, they never get another hand stamped card. They get the crappy ones from the dollar store. Just saying, you can do what you like, but once somebody, if somebody has the audacity to complain about a hand stamp card, they don't get any more. All right, so we are gonna just put this on the inside. And then, so I also added the bow punch, okay? And there is a matching stamp set that um, might not be right here. Nope, I must have put it away. Huh. Well, that's amazing. 
No, I'm just kidding. Um, so anyway, there is a, a stamp set and uh, a demonstrator I watch quite frequently um, who does a lot of great paper pumpkin ideas. In fact, many of these came from her video. Um, Rachel Tessman, um, for her million dollar stamp set, when um, she helped inspire and create a stamp set that coordinates with this punch, which is really fabulous. But we can just take this and just because the leaves get bigger as they go down, this last one, first of all, it, it is sometimes in the way. And secondly, it's pretty big. So we're just gonna take that one off. And then we're gonna find that little vase that I did in the boho blue like this. And we're just gonna put that plant right in there. And I'm gonna just put a little adhesive there. Okay, like that. It doesn't have to be standing perfectly straight. Especially like if you only have a few stems in a wide open, uh, wide neck base, they don't stand straight up. All right, um, because I have my thank you here, I kind of want my vase over on the other side. It just helps balance things. So that means that the place that I kind of did my not so great um, lining up is gonna be over there, but that's okay. All right, let's grab a few dimensionals. Oh no, I, I don't need dimensionals. I can use these fabulous strips from the kit. So. Let's, since they gave us these, let's use them. All right, so let's use that there and this here. So I just went diagonally and I made sure that I went across the stem just so that um, it wouldn't come off. Okay. And then we'll just line this up over here. Is make sure that you're not going past your fold, okay? And just put that on there. So now you have a pretty border, you have a fun vase, a little bit of greenery, and thank you, okay? Oops, and um, I'm wondering if some of the blue that I'm getting on my hands is actually from the card. Could be. Anyway, you just want to be careful. All right, so there's one. So this one I did a little differently. So I chopped off a, piece, a pretty good sized chunk. What did I chop off of there? Um, one, two, three inches. So I only left us um, two and a half inches um, at the top. Let me grab this. And now this is a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock. This is not one of the, the bases from the kit. Okay. And um, so I also added a little piece of um, Knight of Navy that is two and a quarter by four and a quarter, and so then this is two by four, okay, like that. All right, so we're gonna need one of those vases. And we're gonna stamp that using this, although, you know what? I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use this because um, the it's easier to see. Okay, it's just easier to see the outline of the vase, the white against a darker color, as opposed to on the white paper. All right, there we. 
So I am gonna stand up. You might see a little of my hair. You definitely hear me moving my stool out of the way. <laughs> Hello, Melanie from Montana. You know what? I'll just let me get that good and inky. There we go. All right. I think I got it. I have been enjoying Melanie's travels from afar. She is, she and her husband are doing lots of traveling out west with their RV. All right, now, the trick is now getting it off of here without getting super inky and without, whew, <laughs> and without um, smudging anything. Like, you don't want it to fall back onto there. And then I'm just going to wipe that ink off because if you don't, it doesn't dry on the silicone mat and anything else that you put on there could get inky, which would be bad. All right, so I think we're going to use two of these. So I have these two smaller parts from the bow punch, okay? All right, so we'll put a little bit of adhesive here and we'll put one up a little bit high and one down a little bit lower, kind of like that. There we go. And now we will get a couple more of those little strips. And put, I don't think that went where you can see it. All right. Yeah, I'm kind of going to end up kind of blue. That's all right. Night of Navy has been my favorite Stampin' Up! color, like, forever. I love it. And it's been around pretty much forever. Um, yeah, I, want, I think I want to do this because I think what I'm going to do is put, you know, that happy birthday I wasn't going to, I didn't use before. Yeah, I'm going to use it now. <laughs> All right, we're going to stay with some friends next week. And I think I am going to use all these cards and give, bring her a little gifty um, for, yeah. Okay. So now we will add this to here. Okay. And I think that was pretty brave of me to add the, the pot and the flowers before I stamped. That could have been a disaster, but it wasn't. Thank goodness. All right, so let me figure out. Okay, here's the here's the piece. Now, this was this again is a Rachel Tussman card that I have cased. I really liked it. I liked that she left the curve of the envelope flap, and I and she used this piece that mimicked that same curve um, for the inside. So I really thought that was quite clever. Um, sometimes we worry about getting those edges straight when we're using the envelopes, and that was not a concern, and I liked that. I liked the little bit different. So this goes here, and then your envelope flap goes here. So both curves are sort of facing up, okay? Um, and I will put those measurements in the comments um, later tonight and in the description in the YouTube video. I will make sure that all those, you could even lick the envelope and use that adhesive if you want. I'm not sure I do. <laughs> I haven't taste tested these envelopes. I don't know how they are. You know how some, you think, some like envelope glue is fine and others you go, oh, yuck. Wish I had had a sponge for that one. Anyway, just a, an aside there. Okay, so let's put that there so I'll be able to find it, maybe. 
All right, so then, now here's where it's gonna get a little bit tricky, okay? When you go to adhere, well, not this part, but when you adhere this, you wanna be sure that you're not, that you're only putting it adhesive on the part that's gonna touch up here, because if you put adhesive down here, yeah, your card isn't gonna open. It's gonna stay stuck, shut. Okay, so let's use a few of, uh, yeah, because this will, no, we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you a tip for only getting it where you want it. We're going to do this edge, all right, because we know we want the topmost edge on here, right? Then we're going to kind of eyeball what is the middle, and we're going to put it way down at this edge in the middle. Okay, and so that way we now know that this is not going to have any adhesive where it shouldn't. All right, so by, but it will have adhesive enough to stay where it belongs. Okay, so we're just gonna do that. Looks pretty good, and we'll just give it a little press right there. Okay, so now your card opens like that. Okay, all right, so that's two. That's pretty fun. All right, so this, this next card has a lot of little, little things. Okay, so I, so in the kit, it was meant to be popped up this border okay um because i'm going to have some other things popped up i chose not to have this popped up on this one or rachel did actually um so anyway so we just put a little bit of the liquid glue this is another item from the online store and it's great stuff so you want to very carefully pick it up. There's that silicone mat, just in case it goes off the edge. That way we won't get sticky all over our grid paper. Okay. And I like to sort of start and get part of it lined up and then just carefully keep going. Now you want to kind of make sure that you're not pulling something this small and delicate because you can definitely get it out of shape and out of alignment. Okay, but whoa, ho, ho, not bad, Miss Leslie. All right, so there's that. So what I did for this card base is I just added a base of our thick basic white. Okay, um, it was a, a catch on like, Rachel dis discovered when she first did this card that she was sort of wasting the back side. So let me show you what I mean. Let me pull out. I think I still have one. Oh, maybe I don't. Well, I don't because I've cut them all apart now. But the bases were printed front and back. So when she was getting ready to do her um, missing middle card. She cut some from the end and then she cut another panel so that she had a piece that was two and a half inches wide, like this. So she cut first seven eighths of an inch off and then she cut this piece off. And then she had this piece still left at the, at the fold with the whole back. That was all printed. Well, that, to me, that's a bit of a waste. And she sort of seemed to feel the same way because you could use that piece for something different. So what I ended up doing was cutting two pieces that were 7 eighths of an inch. And you do want to make sure that your little foxes that are printed on there are going the right direction. Okay. And then I had that 2 and a half inch piece. And now I've still got the whole back left for another card. 
So then the little strips that I cut off that, um, well, actually I cut these from um, Knight of Navy cardstock, but you could use those strips that you used. Remember when I said I had cut quarter inches, quarter inch strips off? You could use those pieces. And then here, what we're gonna do is we're going to, I think it'll be easier if we do this. Like that. And yep, we're okay. And then we'll just line this up so that we just have the nicest border next to that, okay? It doesn't have to be a, a big border. Oops, a little fuzzy. I think it's time for a new blade in my trimmer. Okay, and we're gonna do this one too. All right. There's that. Now, for my friends that are local, and not in Montana, <laughs> um, you can always bring any Stampin' Up! kit that you would like to work on. It doesn't have to be the current month if you don't want to, or you didn't happen to get that kit. But if you ha happen to have a stack of boxes and you just need some time and space to work on them, any paper pumpkin um, party night will be fine. You can just come and work on whatever kit you want to work on. Okay? All right. So here we are with our foxes going the right direction and having um, the little border. Okay? Now, mine are not perfectly even. I am not stressed about that. Okay? Now we're going to use these a little bit longer ones and I'm going to put them like this. I might even put a short one. Where are those short ones? Put one up here. Because I'm okay with having it not cover everything, but I think I do want both ends supported. Okay. And we're going to line those up. Now I showed this trick the other day. If you only take part of your adhesive off and just have that sticking out like that. And we, whoops, yeah, we're not ready for you yet. Kind of set those and just make sure you're feeling for the edges to be um, lined up. Then you can just finish peeling those like that and you, you still have some time to wiggle that around a little bit. Okay, all right, let's do this one. All right, let's put that here, and this one here, and a couple of those little shorties, one down here, and one over here, like that. Okay, I was a little nervous. I just had a moment. I thought that I had done something wrong, but I didn't. Phew. <laughs> oh, goodness. You ever had just one of those days that you think, holy cow. All right. All right. So, now on this side, we're going to just feel for those edges, okay, feel for the top and bottom, make sure they're nice and even, there we go, 
and we have all of our little well we have most of our little there we go okay got that little one that was the tricky one and just pull those out and now I don't feel worried about squashing those down a little bit so now we have the nice shadow from that raised up part okay and we can put this right here and it looks like the the middle of the card is missing okay and it just opens like that all right so let's put a little bit of adhesive now you don't want any in the middle and you don't want any on the top or the bottom just those two sides right I'm just gonna kind of put those in there like that okay then we will use our scrap paper nope remember not the scrap paper Leslie use the, the silicone mat and use our vase stamp and let's line it up okay I gotta stand up you might hear the stool moving around again <laughs> okay there we go hoping I got that one pretty good all right well pretty good okay yep looks good okay Like I said, Knight of Navy has been my favorite for a long time. Okay. Now, since we've popped all the rest of this up, I'm going to put the vase flat. Now, here's a tip, and Rachel pointed this out. There is one very short stem. Okay. You want to make sure you don't leave a hanging stem like that. You want your vase up high enough. Okay so that you don't have a, a hanging stem and it might be there's a there's like a super sweet spot right there okay like that where you, the other one doesn't hang down and this one is covered up okay and there is just a little spot there okay so I'm going to just put this on with regular adhesive. You could have used the tear and tape that came in the kit. Totally fine. All right, so we're covering that up. That's not floating. Perfect. And we got this great little hello friend, which I love. Okay, and I'm going to just put that right down here, and I think, do I want that? No, I don't want that popped up either. I'm going to just put some adhesive on that. Right down here, and it's just going to fit just nice. Here we go. So perfect. Another card. Dun, dun, dun. You know what? I'm a little nervous about something. These. I'm thinking I need a little. Now glue dots from a previous kit would be perfect for this, um, but I have these glue dots that I'm going to use and use my take your pick tool. And if you kind of roll them when you take them off, they get a little smaller and also 
have a little dimension to them. So I'm just going to put that under there like that so that they don't get caught. I don't need to do them all, just the, the ones that might get caught coming in or out of the envelope. Okay, and I might do that to the other one that we did a plant onto, like this, there. That way, when you go to take it in and out of the envelope, they won't, they're at least sort of secured down, okay? And I think we'll do that on one of these two. I think just maybe this top one. Okay. There we go. So we'll just put one up here. Like that. There. Now I feel a little better. Okay. Here we go. We are cruising. Look at those three cards. Aren't they great? I'm so excited. All right. So we have one more to make, and then I have one to share with you. All right, how are we doing? Oh, I'm taking up a little bit more time than I wanted to. You know what? I'll make these other ones later and show them to you another time, okay? <laughs> For now, we'll have these three. Um, and we won't, we won't worry about those ones yet. I'll make them um, a little bit later and then um, I will share them with you at another time. But I did want to share this one with you and I will put the, the measurements that I used um, in, the, in the comments and um, in the description on YouTube. Okay, so this one uses the dies and some of the designer series paper and a couple of embossing folders, one that's retired. Um, I used the Cheerful Daisies for the greenery. These are the, the little flowers from here, okay? It's cut out with the little die add-on, okay? A um, vase cut out of the designer series paper. And this is the double oval punch, all right? So, um, so my tip for this is it's very, very simple. You cut a half an inch off the cardstock and then you score it at three and a half and seven. Okay, so three and a half, three and a half, three and a half. Works great, okay? Then when you, you, when you put these layers on, this is how you get your five and a half because this is four and a quarter by 10 and a half, right? So you just cut that little half inch off so that you have 10 and a half right? And it's four and a quarter, so you can get two out of a, card, a piece of cardstock. All right, so then when I was putting these pieces on, these die cut pieces, I had to make sure that the top of my piece did not go past five and a half, or it won't fit in the envelope. As it stands right now, this will fit in a, in a traditional envelope, okay? So my first one I checked the middle and then I just made sure that that top was no higher than five and a half. Now, in order to get this middle one lined up just right, I just folded. And so then I was like this, but I had that one underneath to help me line it up, okay? When I put this thank you on, I had to be sure that there wasn't any adhesive in here, okay? And I also had to make sure that it didn't go past the score line or past the, the, the top, okay? So that when you fold it to put it in the envelope, you're good, okay? You're not, you're not too wide, all right? There you go. Isn't that fun? How fun would that be to get, get that? And then I will probably, just on the middle panel, put a piece of basic white just for um, for the um, message, you know, just so you can sign it. And then I did the little, that's where I first masked the little thank you. Okay. All right. Hey, thanks for hanging with me and um, working on some cards together. And I will be live again tomorrow at seven and I'm going to show you 
some cards made with this is a bundle that demonstrators were able to pre-order if you signed up to do a really fun company-wide craft together. Um, so it was an event. They did all of the design work and everything. And then um, you got to craft along with them, which was really, really fun. Um, I did not choose to do that because I was still doing class myself and whatever. So I watched the videos. I enjoyed it very much. And um, I have the resources. I can cut the cardstock, which I will do tomorrow. And I will share the cards um, with you. Now, these will be something that demonstrators can pre-order in August. Okay, because these will be in, this bundle will be in the uh, holiday catalog that comes out in September. So if you choose to join now, you'll be able to pre-order that in August. So just another reason to do that. All right. All right. Hey, thanks, guys. I will see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.